Hey everyone, Alex here. So just wanted to go over this QEEG and uh, I'm encouraging everybody who may have somebody they care about or themselves, if you have any kind of um, real cognitive challenges or if this includes a wide variety of other symptomologies, um, it could be major sleeping disorders or trouble sleeping. Um, <clears throat> Couldn't even, it could even be uh, motor coordination, um, obsessive thinking, depression, whatever it is, there's a wide variety of things that the brain controls, of course. Um, so getting a really high-grade QEG um, is, you know, kind of just something that you'd want to check off your list. So in this case, um, this individual is having a lot of cognitive impairment during the daytime, um, really not really remembering a lot, like no short-term memory. Uh, trouble moving, walking, uh, falling asleep during the day, and then during nighttime, waking up three, four, five times, um, having trouble getting back to bed, literally finding the bed, um, just a lot of challenges, major sleeping impairment. Um, so, of course, we see a lot's revealed. Uh, this is taken the scan in the middle of the day, so we see a huge, huge amount of uh, delta theta activity in most of the brain and most of the brain uh, again yeah both of these are the key ones to look at this is the deviation so um, there's a huge amount significant amount the production of that which uh, you know is in more like the one to two percent of the population so they're comparing this to hundreds of thousands of brain scans of all kinds of people uh, so this would account for just a lot of um, cognitive impairment in many different ways functionally when you're producing this much delta and theta in the middle of the afternoon. Uh, so quite revealing, which is very exciting. Um, and then coming over here too, uh, <clears throat> beta activity is uh, very low, very, very low. Um, in the where? The executive center, the prefrontal cortex, which we usually use significantly if we have an active, normal lifestyle, uh, even watching TV and things like that. Uh, we normally would expect to see much more beta activity um, in the frontal cortex along with usually some alpha activity as well uh, so it's significantly low um, where it needs to really be for having lucidity uh, and then the entire alpha range um, is significantly low in every single region you see all those little dots those are where all the electrodes are placed so they're actually measuring i think it's 12 or 16 maybe 16 different regions uh, of all the main areas that really are most important with the brain. Um, so these frontal, central, posterior, left frontal, etc. Okay, these also go by different names anatomically. Uh, so you can kind of see what is significantly lower than most of the population is in almost every, re is, I think that's every, almost every region there for alpha. Um, significantly high in the delta and the theta. Um, everybody, so uh, this has caused a huge amount of chaos and decline in quality of life and uh, you know people suffer with varying degrees of imbalances like this uh, that are interrelated with so many different conditions um, especially in the world of psychology and psychi psychiatry and yet very few people have ever gone down the road of getting one of these um, QEEGs okay so I would really encourage everybody to um, do a little googling um, if you are curious, have some conditions that you think might be interconnected with the brain, which many things are, um, this is a good thing to check off the list of types of tests to get. People get all kinds of different tests and diagnostic tests. Um, not very often do I find people actually go in and do a specific type of scan for the brain, right? So this is superior and quite different than an MRI or a CT scan. This one is actually focused on the functional wavelengths, the functional waveforms of these different consciousness states, okay? Uh, so this can tell you a lot more. And there's other tests too you can get too um, that are a little more in depth with the brain also uh, that tell you, show you different things about functional topography. Um, if you are looking for a place where you can get this done, I would say most states do at this point have clinics and places that offer QEG. Um, and I do also have some recommendations as well for once you do see um, <clears throat> some significant uh, imbalances, the next question is what modalities, therapeutic uh, protocols would you follow? And there's not that many types of interventions, therapeutic protocols that actually directly address the brain and can restore um, neural pathways and 
your natural, healthy coherency and shifts into these different brainwave states. Uh, one, of, one is um, transcranial magnetic stimulation. Uh, that is one thing that can be done. There is some type of PEMF that will do it as well. Uh, there's also cranial electrostimulation. Uh, there is also neurofeedback and also sometimes biofeedback is helpful too. Uh, there's also functional movement patterns. There's a couple programs that do that. Uh, so it kind of depends on what is going on um, with what you're dealing with and also what comes up in testing as far as what's the best sort of um, path to pursue. If you need the guidance on either aspects of this, on testing or guidance to the right types of modalities, um, you can reach me and my email address in the description below in the comments. And you can also find me on my website as well.